and Skip Bayless, who I think every email, every email oh, that was waiting right. for it's us in the chat room smoke. was waiting to hear what it you had to say. It went up in powder. <laughs> right? Where, where did it go? <laughs> oh, it's, oh, I'm sorry. Don't do that to yeah. poor Jay. Yeah. Let's go back to Saturday, <laughs> gentlemen, if we can. I know you're probably <laughs> salivating a little bit here, Skip. Hi, uh, Skip, how you doing? LeBron, <laughs> did not, fun. LeBron did not shake hands uh, with the Magic mm -hmm. or address yeah, the media after the game. Hands Shake hands. LeBron did not. He did talk yesterday, though, finally. Take a listen to some of what he had to say. Have you talked to Dwight? I mean, you didn't shake hands with anybody last night, but have you talked to him to congratulate him or no? Uh, no, I haven't. I sent him an email last night to congratulate him. But um, one thing about me, guys, you got to understand, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to congratulate somebody after you just lose to him. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, I'm, you know, I'm a winner. You know, it's not being a poor sport or anything like that, but somebody just, somebody beat you up. You're not gonna congratulate them on beating you up. That don't make sense. That don't, that don't, it don't make sense to me. I'm a competitor, and that's what I do. Um, it don't make sense for me to go over shakes in my exam. He says it's not about being a poor sport. A lot of people would disagree mm. out there from comments I've seen. What's your reaction, Scoop? I, for one, was not at all surprised by this. This was, to me, the real LeBron James. This is who he is, and to me, who he has been. This is the spoiled brat product of those billions of witnesses out there. This is the guy I've been talking about as, as he's been the front-running bully all year long, and he finally got punched right in the mouth, and he ran to the locker room in shame. I have been saying for months on this show that all this picture-taking and the posing and the flexing, it, it just doesn't show any class to... to to the game on the court or to his opponents to me and it finally all caught up with him because I think the MVP suddenly realized when the clock ran out that he had failed miserably and I thought it showed even less class to duck the media after the game than to duck Dwight Howard's handshake because he left the guys he had called all along his complimentary players to face the music after the game no class there and no class on the court didn't surprise me. Well, see, I can, I, I can understand that. I think this is a situation where if you're looking at somebody's character, it, they, they always say you judge them how they handle defeat as opposed to how they handle yep. victory. And in this situation, for LeBron to say, you know, for us to know him is to know that he doesn't like losing and shake somebody's hand doesn't make sense. Well, I think in his career so far, there have been four times I think he's been in the playoffs and he hasn't been to the finals, so he has not won his last game. It, unless we go back and somebody shows me proof that he has, he's consistent in doing this, then I don't have a problem with it. If he never stood or shook hands with the Celtics after the game, after they lost last year, cool. If he did the same thing in San Antonio a couple of years ago, he was in the finals, cool. But we know that didn't happen, so we're not making a big deal out of nothing. This is something, and, and this goes into his character, which I, I think is not, it goes to what you've been saying, this goes to something I never wanted to believe. And his action and then his response to try to justify his action leads me to believe that there's something about LeBron James that we're either discovering or something that has to change because I'm not, I don't mind ducking the media skip, but Dwight Howard is supposed to be your friend. Not only did you win a gold medal together, you have, during the All-Star Games, you all are cool with each other, you joke, you know, shooting half-court shots before games. As your boy, as your friend at least, give him a pound, and then walk off the court. Well, the, media, the, media, the media is one thing, but if that's your yeah. guy, at least acknowledge what, because this and, isn't about competition. Wish him luck in the next round. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, anything that comes with some type of human connection, because okay. it's not about competition, it's about acknowledgement at this point. And the fact that he didn't acknowledge mm -hmm. somebody that he knows that is supposed to be his friend, that's what I have a bigger okay, problem for, with. For the record, the Cleveland Plain Dealer said he didn't shake hands after the Celtics. I was going to say, a lot yeah, of people okay. have written in and right. said he didn't shake after the Celtics. Okay, but, okay, but I know okay. for sure that he and Tim Duncan did have a right. Conversation I agree. You're right. After after that, and Tim, okay. they shook hands after in the in, right, this in, is just in, in the outside but, locker but room. LeBron so. used as his excuse here, "I'm a winner." I don't think he's a winner. I, I ask you again, what has well, he, he won? Wasn't a winner in this. Well, series. that's what I'm saying. But he hasn't won anything in six years now, right. to the point that I don't see that he has winners intangibles, the know-how, the will to, to make it happen when it's time to happen in the fourth quarters of these games. And I'll, I'll, we'll get to this later, but in five of the six fourth quarters, I thought he was awful when it was Kobe Michael time. Right. And in the end, I think he's a one-man show in a team sport, 
and it's very hard to pull that off. A lot of people are weighing in on what you guys are saying. Ray from Texas says LeBron has to face humility after dancing, prancing, and posing, blowing out teams. He has to be humble and shake his opponent's hands after a loss. When he did talk with the media yesterday, he also addressed his future in Cleveland. And I'll point out, you saw it before, he was wearing his Yankees hat, and I'm pointing it out because... But listen... I will listen to what you have to say because what you've been saying over the last couple of years has proven once again to be true. LeBron James will not play for an NBA title this year. Whether or not he will in the future, we don't know. But let's get to our list. He almost had a quadruple <laughs> double, which isn't a good thing because uh, the, the turnovers were there, but he also the points, rebounds, and assists were there as well. Grade his performance, an overall grade for LeBron James in Game 6. What is it, Skip? I'm going to give LeBron a break today because he did have a, a triple-double, mm -hmm. including 19 rebounds. So I'm going to give him a D minus, and that's D as in dog minus. That is, but that is a break. I thought for sure yeah. you had him for an F minus. The stat of the night, as you said in your setup, was that he did almost have a quadruple-double. In a do-or-die game on the road, a game that, that people had favored them to win from, from the start of the playoffs, LeBron James had nine turnovers, and what shocked me the most was that at least six of them were shockingly unforced errors. They had nothing to do with defensive pressure, and they just took the heart out of his Cavaliers, I thought, because I saw a Prince James that once again was crumbling under the pressure and the expectations to be King James. And I want to point out, Jay and Rob, that the Cavs cut it to four with 837 left. And that was because, back -back because, threes. because he made a couple of threes. Now, now that broke an 0 for 10 three point string for LeBron. And the second one was about as awkward looking a three point shot as I've ever witnessed. But it did go in. And all of a sudden, Rondo is feeling the heat from LeBron James and misses two free throws. Absolutely. And LeBron comes right down and turns it over for the eighth time again and crushes the momentum. And it swings the other way and it eventually pierces its three, three pointer and it's over. In the last eight minutes of that game, LeBron James, the two-time MVP, took three shots, three shots total. He ran from the ball way too much. One of the shots he made, which was an uncontested dunk. And yet, in the last two minutes, Rob Parker, I saw LeBron James give up. And in turn, his team gave the up. The whole team did, they, yeah. they all just said, okay, if you're giving up, we'll stop. We won't foul. And they, it, this was in a way that I could never have imagined a Michael Jordan or a Larry Bird or a Magic Johnson or even a Reggie Miller giving up with the game still a little bit in the balance because for any winner, they, they yeah, anybody. Winner. Because you're right, Skip, from that standpoint. I, I have him as a C-. minus. Because I, I thought the turnovers were just crushing. You know, I understand the other points, the rebounds, that's all the fine. The shooting percentage was 8 for 21, that's, that's which was not, actually the same percentage the team shot. But right. you've got to shoot better than you've 8 for You've got to shoot 21. better, but, but you can't be so sloppy with the ball. And, and, and I think you're right. There was a definite give, giving up at the end where... The Celtics had missed some free throws. You, you get them to miss two or three free throws in a row, you knock down a couple Especially of Especially with Rondo handling the ball. There's a chance that you're still in the game. Absolutely. I was stunned that they just said, and you're right, but they were signaled by LeBron James, who at the very end, look at where he was. He wasn't touching the ball. He was pushed all the way out. I just thought to myself, he's not engaged at all. Right. And the that final minutes, the it was each time he, was, each time he held, held the ball, the first thing he thought to do was to get rid of it. Like hot potato it was a game of hot potato. I think potato. you hit the nail on the head. He raised the white flag first, mm -hmm. and you could Everybody see it. You could see it when they stopped falling. The whole team put the white flag up. It was something. I think everybody was stunned as they watched that. All right, how much ultimately? How much damage did LeBron James do to his reputation with this series of basketball? Look, obviously, for me, as you well know, all too well, it just confirmed everything I've been saying about him for three or four years on this show and so much of it I've been criticized for because I've been unfair and over the top when I talk about LeBron James and so Jay just let me say for the record right now I'm offended when people dismiss me as a hater I don't like that term when it comes to LeBron if you want to use it in the big picture that's and it's fine. used towards you a lot okay when it comes to LeBron James and, and as, others too as God is my witness I don't hate LeBron I think I don't know him well, you know him better than I do, but, but I get the feeling he's really a good guy, nice guy. Maybe he's too nice of a guy. But please don't kill the messenger because all I ever do and have tried to do from the start with LeBron James is just watch closely and tell the truth about what I see. And truth is, from the start, I saw Batman talent, supreme talent, 
biggest talent I've ever seen in the NBA. But the intangibles are much closer to Robin. He's Robin more than he's Batman. He's Pippin more than he's Jordan. And a, I think that's a legitimately fair point. If I may speak for those who throw the arrows at you when it comes to haters, answer this. Because I think this is something that a lot of folks that listen have a problem with. We understand that there are shortcomings in the game. It, it, it's obvious. If you watch him as closely as you have, they are there. But the D minus is to automatically dismiss a line, skip, 27 points, 19 rebounds, and 10 assists. Now, yes, the turnovers are inexcusable, and the shooting percentage was pathetic, but a D minus implies that he is the worst student in the class. Mm -hmm. That's where I think those that come at you with that hater okay. line, I think that's the problem that they may have. We're back to Michael Jordan. He, I, I feel like he begged this this comparison because he did choose number 23 and he's going to change to six next year but he did steal the powder throwing routine and I thought he shamed the number 23 the last two games and that's my legacy for him right now because that's all I have to go on but well, you was, have you have other games I, I know on, but he was but lifeless in those last okay, two games that's fair. to the point I'm saying he's the fake MJ he's the two-time MVP with two times the best regular season team by far to me, and the, the prohibitive favorite going into the playoffs, and twice now I've I've gone okay. I'm going Orlando in six last year over Prince James. You got them both, and then I'm going to Boston in six because he can't stand up to the pressure. The higher the expectations, the worse he performs. Right. Now, now this is you know you talk about uh, uh, damaging his reputation, mm -hmm. and I think he did damage it. Especially the game five was even more where people just really lost their minds on what he was doing and couldn't right. put a finger on A lot of head scratching it, right? to the disconnect of to the disconnect, it wasn't there. Totally. I think today people should appreciate Michael Jordan more than ever before because, and I'm not saying it's LeBron's fault because people always want to make a comparison, totally skip, to Michael Jordan. And when you look and, and now start to compare the notes, how hard it is to win mm -hmm. and what it takes other than just pure basketball talent, which we know LeBron has, it tells you about that gene you always talk about, yep. that Michael has, that you've got to question now whether or not LeBron really has it. I think those, and, those questions are fair. And, and I think this is what I got. Just two minutes ago, I'm in the cafeteria. Young 20-year-old black guy who is a LeBron fan, and those are all the people, Skip, yep. who you hear from who are all on LeBron's the greatest, said today for the first time, you know what, I think I'm going to be off this bandwagon. He is not Michael Jordan. And I think people are going to finally buy into what you've been saying for a long but, but time. Let me, let me bring something up standpoint. quickly because you have always made the contention that it was LeBron who welcomed that upon himself. Truth be told, he was the chosen one, as dubbed by Sports Illustrated. Okay. The mass media skip from the time this kid was 15 years old okay. was saying, as we so unfairly and often do, here he is, the next one. I don't believe that LeBron James discouraged those. No, he didn't discourage it, but at 16 and 17 okay. and 18 year old, but, but I do you know how to seen, do that? Well, okay, what we've seen now, period, end of story. LeBron James was made for the regular season. He's a regular season dynamo. He's made for our Sports Center plays of the night because he's always number one in the regular season. But come postseason time, postseason, he's the most overrated, overhyped superstar in my history in this business. Seriously, that, that's, that's my bottom line to this discussion. That's a very fair, I, I, I would say that's fair. I would say so that's far, he doesn't because have, he doesn't have the... with the regular season accolades, we just haven't seen it where we need to see it to this point, to this point. Yep. I'm to stop chewing. The answer to the question everybody wants to know. LeBron, what's your decision? Um, in this fall, man, this is very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. Miami Heat. That was the conclusion you woke up with this morning. That was the conclusion I woke up with this morning. Why? Um, <clears throat> like I said before, I feel like it's, it's going to give me the best opportunity to, to win and to win for multiple years. Um, and not only just to win in a regular season or just to win um, five games in a row or three games in a row. Um, I want to be able to win championships and I feel like I can compete down there. Was it always in your plan to go and play with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh? Well, I mean, 
I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, to say it was always in my plans, I, I can't say it was always in my plans because I never thought it was possible. Um, uh, but the things that the, the Miami Heat franchise have done to be able to free up cap space and to be able to put themselves in a position this summer to have all three of us, um, you know, it was hard to turn down. I mean, you know, those are two great players, two of the greatest players that we have in this game today. And, um, you know, you add me, uh, we're going to be a really good team. The three of you will share now the spotlight and the limelight. And in many ways, you're going to Dwayne Wade's team. He's been in Miami. He's won a championship. How do you think you'll be able to fit in and possibly not be the headliner all the time? Well, for me, um, it's not about sharing. You know, it's about everybody having their own spotlight and then just doing what's best for the team. Um, you know, at, at this point, um, D. Wade is, he's the unselfish guy here. To be able to have Chris Bosh and then LeBron James to welcome us to his team, it, it's not about an individual here. Um, because if that was the case, D. Wade wouldn't have asked us to join him or we wouldn't have asked him if it was okay to come down here. It's not about individuals. It's about a team, and that's what this game is about. How do you explain this to the people in Cleveland? Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's heartfelt for me. Um, you know, it's hard to explain, but at the same time, my heart in the seven years that I've gave. We're going to challenge each other in practice. And uh, the way we're going to challenge each other to get better in practice, once the game start, I mean, it's going to be easy. I mean. But we also know you three kings came down here to win championships. Absolutely. Not one, championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, sports fans. Okay, let's get into this one. LeBron James makes a cowardly decision after melting down, choking, and giving up on his team to go do what? To go get help. So that's what you saw right there. You saw the fact that in two, we're going to cover the whole thing, 2008 too later, right? Because we're supposed to act like that didn't happen in the playoffs neither. But if we go back to 2007, it, it, it was just for telling his future what he was going to be, right? Basically a choke artist. So as you see in the video in 2009, this guy has the number one seed overall in the playoffs. You know, chokes in most of those games, even the final game, the closeout game, the elimination game against the Magic, a number three seed, mind you. And not only does he lose as the number one seed, he chokes, he melts down, and then he walks off the court. Don't even shake nobody's hand. Is that familiar? And then he said he's a winner. That ain't what he does. <laughs> what a crybaby right here, man. What a crybaby. Loser, sore loser. That, that, that's what he was. And they kind of go and talk about it. I was going to put it in the, the, one of the videos where we was talking about LeBron and, you know, comparing him to Michael Jordan about how they talked after, after they won a championship or didn't win a championship. And LeBron talked much like a, a child, not a millionaire, not a winner, not a leader. He, he, he spoke like a child. And <laughs> the part I was going to put in the video, which I can't, you're going to hit me with a copy, copyright strike, is when they were talking about in 2009 in this video, how this guy has no respect. Well, they didn't say it this way, but I'm going to say it this way because this is pretty much what they were saying. Him dancing and taking pictures and front running and all this stuff. This is what this guy does. He has no respect for leadership, for past players, for the NBA, for competition. He comes out dancing, um, acting like he's taking pictures. He does this at the beginning of the game. He does this um, sometimes at halftime. And he does it a lot when he's winning. They're sitting on the bench, laughing, carrying on, dancing, and showing up their, their, their opponents especially when they're winning and the fact that he won't go shake. Oh, um, he won't go shake hands with, with the white Howard is criminal. 
Here we go, 2010. He breaks it up again. Number one overall seed in the playoffs. And really has no excuse to be doing all this, to turn the ball over all these times like he did in both series, missing all these free throws, breaking it up, doing all this stuff. <laughs> and then, you know, he lost to a four seed. The great Boston Celtics, who was a four seed. The great Boston, in 2010, the great Boston Celtics, who a year before in 2009, got smoked by the Orlando Magic. Hmm. You guys keep trying to tell me this was an all-time great Boston team? They had the number one seed in the, in, in the Western uh, Eastern Conference one year, right? And they won one championship. How was they an all-time great team? So, basically, what LeBron thought he could do was pretty much, and, and he did it for a long time. He was just playing off of pure athleticism and how big he was and how they pretty much changed the rules to no defense. You can't hand check and do all that stuff no more starting in 2005 and he could just run rough shot over the league with his athleticism and he basically did in the east and that's how he got to the finals in 2007 after only being in the playoffs one time that would be impossible in the 90s or the 80s but because they changed the rules in 2005 anything was possible for a guy who no longer had to get better at his game he didn't have to go to the post have a post game he didn't have to have a mid-range he didn't have to shoot free throws he could just run rough shot into the paint and stuff like that and when they called out the paint he was a dead duck he turned into a brick artist so when we get to the decision right here the coward decision he states that basically that's the only way he could win that would give him his best chance of not winning games in the regular season but in the playoffs and winning a whole bunch of championships go by playing with Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, top 10 players in the league at the time. Yep. Top 10 players in the league at the time. And then if that wasn't cowardly enough, well, let me go back. It, it gave him a big chance to win because now, you know, he has so many shortcomings that he can cover all bases now. And I told you guys once before, Curry didn't change the game where you got four guys sitting at the three-point line. It was LeBron who did, right? Drive to the basket. All your guys are spread out on the perimeter. So now if you try to stop LeBron from driving, <clears throat> now you got all these shooters out there ready to bomb away. Um, I, I, I think stuff like that similar to, you know, the Orlando Magic and... I think the Houston Rockets in 94, 95, the difference is Shaq was in the paint. Hakeem was in the paint. So if you went to try to stop them, you had guys outside ready to bomb away. That wasn't the case for LeBron James. He just drove it from the three-point line, barreling into people. And if you try to stop that lane, now he kicked it out to those guys. He wasn't a paint guy. So not only did he make that coward decision, <laughs> guess what? He goes and taunts the NBA. Not one not two, not three. So this is the only way he could win. And he went from the nice guy, likable guy. If you go watch that um, LeBron versus Kobe video that I made, they were good friends. And Kobe didn't really want to answer why LeBron didn't want to take the last shot, why LeBron wasn't clutch. He was just like, I don't care. I don't know what's in his mind, but I'm going to take it. I'm going to do what I got to do. And, you know, Kobe didn't care about being a villain. As long as he won, <laughs> he didn't care. He said LeBron was a nice guy, a funny guy, and just wants everybody to like him. So because he couldn't get it done in Cleveland, he went to Miami and became a villain. If you go watch that video, right? And he became a guy that started paying the media off, uh, paying the media off to lie for him. Because we all know in 2011... He melted down again. So basically, all real basketball fans that was back there. Did you hear the boys in, when he was at the Boys and Girls Club? When he made his decision, they was like, oh. They were shocked. And this is what he do in front of children? He runs like a coward? With his tail between his legs? Don't stand up like a man and takes the easy way out? 
<laughs> this is what he does, and this is supposed to mean something because he did it at some boys and girls club? What a coward. They didn't cheer him on when he did that. They were shocked. So at this point, all real basketball fans already acknowledged and knew um, that his career as far as a top 10 player, like a Larry Bird, like a Magic Johnson, like a Kareem, like, like a Duncan, like a Kobe, like a Jordan, like a Russell, these type of guys, he would never be up there because they had to stick, stand in there and grind it out. They didn't go run. They didn't go run. And if they got free agents, it was nothing like on this level right here. Nothing. This guy was only in his seventh season. And he didn't leave because he didn't have the pieces or that his team failed him. This guy was melting down. It was because of him. If Now, if it was his team was missing all these shots doing, I could understand that. But <laughs> it was him. And, okay, maybe it wasn't your turn yet. Um, Everybody has a turn. This guy had nothing to rush but he already knew it, it it don't matter that whatever he did maybe he could have went and played with Dwayne Wade it would not have worked out would not have worked out without Bosch and eventually without Allen without rearranging that whole it would not have worked out with just him too because he has so many shortcomings because he don't want to work on his game. He was a, um, what, what, what they were saying, he was a um, regular season guy, that's it. So his career was basically over after that as far as the top 10 player. But what are you guys talking about? It's over. That's like Jordan going to play with um, Malone and Hakeem. Guy's career's been over. Okay, you, you guys can say that the big three did it, but man, they was, they was far deep in their careers. And they wasn't ever looking to be the GOAT. They were just looking for a championship so they can have a ring. And you saw what that got them. One ring <laughs> and one time winning the conference. And LeBron winning. So in game six against the Magic, where he walked out and didn't even shake hands, he had 25 points, 8 for 20, 40% from the field, 25% from the three. I mean, this guy would be launching threes too back then. Don't get it twisted. Like four to seven a game because he don't he didn't want to work on his mid-range. 63% from the, th from the free throw. Imagine that. How, how many LeBricks he had at the free throw? And three turnovers, a minus 12. Against Boston, we all hear Skip say this, games four, five, and six, I've never seen a superstar melt like melt down like this. Against Boston in 2010, as a number one overall seed against a number four Boston, games four, 22 points, seven for 18 from the field, 38% from the field, 0 for five from three, told you, 0% from three. Seven turnovers, a minus seven. Game five, 15 points, three for 14 from the field. Um, 21 21 percent from the field. Zero for four from three. And of course, zero percent from three. Three turnovers, a minus 22. Game six. Remember, he didn't even get to these to game seven as a number one overall seed in the playoffs. Um, game six, about to get eliminated. 27 points, eight for 21 from the field. 38 field goal percentage. He was two for four from three, which was 50 percent, but nine turnovers. Yeah. Nine turnovers. And, you know, we, we know what he did the next year up in, um, what he did up in um, Miami. So, so look at this. Let me see if I got these numbers. So, in the year before that, 2008, coming off the 2007 finals where he bricked it up, he faces his first super team, right? His first super team against his super team Boston team, right? And I think this was in the second round. He had 20, what is it, 25? I think there's 26 points. And I think he was like 10 and 8 or something. I forget what it was, you know, because they only look at the stats. But this guy had averaged, what, five turnovers per game, shot 35% from the field, right? 23 from the three-point and 75% from the line. And in that series, in game one, where he had Ben Wallace, he had El Gauskas, two-time All-Star El Gauskas, Hall of Famer Ben Wallace. So in 2008, in that series against the Big Three, 
game one, 12 points. Goodness, oh, 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 you might need a seatbelt for this. Game one, because they, they act like this didn't happen. Four meltdowns in a row in the playoffs, right? 07 finals, 08, 09, 2010, 2011. Well, let's look at 2008 because we already know about 07. We just said 09, 2010, and we know about 2011. So, again, 2008, game one against Boston. 12 points, 10 turnovers, 11% from the field? What? 0% from three in a minus seven. Game two, 21 points, seven turnovers, 25% from the field, um, 0% from three, uh, minus 15. Game six, I think that was at No. I'm going to tell you about this. Game six, 32 points, eight turnovers, 39% from the field, 0%, three-point percentage. And I got this whole thing. The, 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 all seven games, you won't even believe this guy took this Boston team putting up these kind of horrible um, percentages to a game seven. You, you <laughs> the same thing. If you go all seven games, it's pretty – Yeah, I think he had two good games, two good games. So basically, he melted down from 2007. I'm talking about in a row, right? Series meltdown. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And if we count 2006, he took a 3-2 lead going back home against Detroit with Ben Wallace and melted down. Go look at those games 6 and 7. Go, go look at that. Same thing. All these turnovers, all these missed free throws, low uh Low field goal percentage, low three point percentage. Um, same thing. What was this guy had no choice, had no choice but to go run and build super teams. He ain't got it. He never had it. He needs all these shooters because he can't shoot. He's never been able to shoot. He needs a lot of um other teams franchise players as he did his whole career. Went to ball. I mean, went to Miami. Played with other teams, number one franchise players. Went to Cleveland, other teams, number one franchise players. And did the same thing in L.A. He needs these guys that can shoot. And he needs a lot of guys that you can worry about. So, you know, you don't have to worry about him. And he needs all these people outside the paint so he can drive the basket. So, you know, it's horrible for the LeBron fans <laughs> to come to the come to grips. This guy really was never that guy ever. His whole career is just a media, movie-driven career. It's never been off of hard work. It's never been off the grind, excellence, um, positional skills, real greatness, nothing like that. The greatest he could really get was to go lift weights so he could just bull charge the lane. While, people, while the league was getting smaller and turned into shooters, he was getting bigger. And we've been seeing that for a long time. The big guys were in the 80s, especially in the 90s. So in the 90s, he would be nothing but another big dude. He would be like big as Anthony Mason or something like that. And then they would, <laughs> you're just going to bull charge the lane. It would be a joke. You would get your shot blocked. You would just be another big guy. And if you didn't have like any footwork, any positional skills as a big man in the paint, you, you won't be nothing. You couldn't flop. You couldn't show teammates up. You couldn't pick the coach you wanted to all the time because you, you bricked it up. Um, you would have to work on your game. You would have to play some type of system. And it's just sad when you look back at this. We, we still dealing with the same thing today. The same thing. No positional skills. Can't really shoot. Has to get all these guys. Doesn't take accountability. Walks out of games. Um, it's nuts, man. It, it, it's nuts that you now now you got his son up in the game, and like I said before, if this guy did everything right and did everything the right way and was a winner, all this stuff, and you know he brought his star son into the league, and you could be like, well, man, that's you know for a guy, other guys you'd be like, man, that's Tim Duncan's son, um, that's John Stockton's son, that's Carl Malone's son, that's whoever son. Okay, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, whatever. No, this is LeBron's son. Nobody likes this guy outside of LeBron fans because we don't respect. What he's did. His career was over when he went to Miami. It was over. <laughs> I don't know what these people have been telling you. It was over back then. He went to Miami, lost, went to Cleveland, lost more than he won. Has went to L.A. and has lost more than he won. And we're just not talking about championships. We're talking about since he's been there, he's lost. So he's just been like this career loser with a made-up career. It's 
career loser. And that's why I said before. The 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 last real OGs was Tim Duncan, um, Kevin Garnett, and Kobe Bryant. When LeBron went to Miami, it basically turned into a reality show, right? You could see the not one, not two. He went to the Boys and Girls Club. And why would you even do that after you left your team? So since LeBron went to Miami, the league has been nothing but a reality show. It's been nothing but that. It's not even been real basketball. Nothing. Your league has to have some kind of soap opera to make it, you know, people just don't want to see people hit the ball, throw the ball. And so we, we want to see a soap opera too. But when it's 70% soap opera and 30% actual play on the court, it's no good. And it's not even a good soap opera. There's a soap opera that got everybody arguing, fighting, um, did some past great players because of this guy. I mean, what are we talking about? No other sports does this stuff, especially for a loser. We don't we do not do this for a loser. So, I mean, it seems like it's going to be the end of the world before this guy gets out of the league. And it's, that's what it's going to seem like. Man, it must be the end of the world. This loser got out of the league. Because <laughs> yeah, his career has been over since 2010, 2011. Tell me what you think.